Soul Calibur 3 didn't have any guest characters, at least none on the main roster. There was still, of course, the unlockable costume pieces that, when put together, made something that looked like something that resembled Cosmos, but that was nowhere near as cool as Link, Heihachi, or Spawn, the console-exclusive guest characters of Soul Calibur 2. But during my research for my last video about the guest characters of Soul Calibur 2, I came across a cool little nugget of information, saying that Dante of Devil May Cry fame was originally going to be a part of the Soul Calibur 3 cast. And I thought that would have just been fantastic. He not only has the weapons, but he has the attitude and he has the one-liners to serve as an amazing foil to the rest of the Soul Calibur cast. So I decided to dust my journalism degree off for once in my miserable life and really crack down on this rumor to find where it came from and if the rumor actually holds any water. And here are the results of my research. Now, if you'd like, please follow me on Twitter at StumbleBTV or give me a shout on YouTube and like that button and ring that bell and follow that gram and do that thing, whatever. Have a good rest of the video. I'll see you at the end. <laughs> Time to go to work, guys. I first found the rumor on the place where all great YouTubers do their initial research, on a fan wiki. Though I'd never use them as a primary source, they are packed with useful, general information that will point you in the right direction when you want to look into a particular topic. So while looking through the Soul Calibur 3 page, there was an entry that noted that Dante was originally going to be in the game, but was dropped for unknown reasons, potentially something as weird as character roster space. This claim didn't have any kind of sources attached to it, leading me to my own devices, which in this case is basic Googling. I saw random forum posts here and there claiming that Game Informer magazine confirmed Dante's appearance in Soul Calibur 3. There did seem to be an article on the Game Informer website implying as much, so I did what any reasonable person would do and spent about $50 on Amazon for copies of every old Game Informer that I could find with a mention of Soul Calibur 3. But as the magazines arrived and I began to look through them, I thought that I had wasted my money. But then, in the May 2005 edition, there was a preview of the game, and lo and behold, there was a small section about the whispers of Dante's Soul Calibur debut. It was far from an official confirmation, but this meant that there was a significant amount of traction behind this information. From there, I found this story from Engadget, seemingly confirming the rumors true. Unfortunately, all of the links and images on this page are broken, and that does make sense. As content management systems are updated, it's only logical that legacy articles would begin to break as the software they were written on become obsolete. So I busted out one of my favorite tools, the Wayback Machine, a website that lets you see internet pages as they existed in the past. I entered this URL and, well, that's weird. Even though this was from 2005, the Wayback Machine only has archives from as recent as 2016. It turns out that the original site that posted the article, Joystick, shut down in 2015 and was merged into Engadget, so I changed the URL, and jackpot! I get hits from all the way back to 2005, with all of the links and images working as intended. This Joystick article sources a thread on the now-defunct Team Xbox forums. A post from a user on February 6, 2005, says a man named Hiroshi Yamaguchi, a producer at Namco, told Shonen Jump the following. Don't want to say anything concrete, but we've been growing our relationship with Capcom recently. We are producing a sim slash RPG under our monolith R&D division that is a joint effort between Namco and Capcom. We both received benefits from this. One is that we let Capcom Studio One borrow the Soul Calibur 2 engine for a particular boss fight in Devil May Cry 3. And the other is the right for us to include one of Capcom's characters in the Sony version of Soul Calibur 3. Don't want to give it away, as nothing this early is 100%, but let's just say that a lot of fans worldwide have given us a lot of emails on why this really cool Capcom character wasn't in Soul Calibur 2. Hopefully we can appease those fans by adding this really well-known Capcom character in." Unquote. So immediately I notice a few things that, on the surface, give this rumor some credibility. The Monolith Soft RPG that was referenced turned out to be Namco Cross Capcom so a partnership would be reasonable. This quote also implies that Capcom Studio One developed Devil May Cry 3, which they did. And finally, 
the claim that Namco let Capcom borrow the Soul Calibur 2 engine is at the very, very least plausible. Using multiple engines for the same game is very rare in game development circles. 007 Nightfire, for example, used one engine for its first-person shooter gameplay and another for its driving sections. 2010's Medal of Honor used Unreal Engine 3 for its single-player from Danger Close games, but Frostbite for its multiplayer, which was developed by DICE. And Star Wars The Force Unleashed used multiple physics engines. So theoretically, it's possible, just incredibly inefficient. Now, I wanted to look up the source of this interview, something that would have to be an early 2005 edition of Shonen Jump. There's just one problem. Shonen Jump is a manga serial. Video game news isn't really this magazine's domain. And another thing, why did Mr. Yamaguchi say that this was for the Sony version of the game? If he were actually a producer at Namco, he surely would have been clued into the fact that there would be no other versions of Soul Calibur 3, as it was exclusive to the PlayStation 2. And another thing, why can't I seem to find Hiroshi Yamaguchi in the producer credits of Soul Calibur 3, or in the credits of the game at all? And if this interview was printed in February of 05, then why was Soul Calibur 3 announced in March? It doesn't make sense that some loose-lipped producer would take a public-facing interview and practically spoil the announcement of one of his company's most major franchises. And just who is Hiroshi Yamaguchi anyway? Well, I looked it up, and apparently he's actually a composer for Platinum Games. Nope, sorry, he's actually an award-winning and highly esteemed doctor. Wait, 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 wait a minute. I'm just hearing that Mr. Yamaguchi has put down his forceps and picked up the boxing gloves because he fought to a very respectable 18-4 record. Look, all of this is to say that I can't actually find proof that there was someone named Hiroshi Yamaguchi working at Namco as a producer in 2005, which means that I can't prove that there wasn't somebody by that name working at that company in that position at that time frame. I attempted to find more information about either the person who posted the original quote or more replies to the thread, but unfortunately with the closure of Team Xbox and plenty of blind spots on the Wayback Machine, I thought that this was as far back as the rabbit hole went. But then I spotted something. Another post by the original poster of the thread, this time with an image, accompanied by the words, more proof. It's something that up until now I completely ignored because I thought that this too was lost to time, not rescued by web crawlers. But then I noticed that there was a potentially salvageable URL that was just being broken by the Wayback Machine's formatting. So I deleted that part of the website and pasted the rest into my web browser. Could this be it? Could this be the proof that Dante himself was supposed to make a guest appearance in Soul Calibur 3? I was shaking, ready to unveil this megaton that would blow this story wide open. So let's ignore the fact that this is the Soul Calibur 2 logo. Let's ignore the fact that the official art for a new game would have new models and not just key art from Soul Calibur 2, and Devil May Cry 2. I'll also let slide the fact that Ivy is somehow standing on Dante's gun, and even the fact that Maxi is standing in front of Nightmare, unbalancing the frame for some reason, probably to hide the puff of smoke on Nightmare's leg. But if you were really gonna try to fool anyone with this image, I mean, anyone at all, you may want to erase the copyright information that clearly says Necrid, and Zelda, and, oh yeah, Soul Calibur 2? So to recap, we have a quote from somebody who may not even exist, is not credited in the game that they're talking about, which is a game that wasn't even announced at the time, in a magazine that doesn't cover video games with a promotional image that looks like it was made in MS Paint. Thankfully, this rumor has two silver bullets against it. In a 2005 interview on the official Project Soul website, Soul Calibur 3 producer, the real Soul Calibur 3 producer, Hiroaki Yotoriyama straight up said that no, there was going to be no guest characters and no other versions aside from the PlayStation 2 version of Soul Calibur 3. 
But you know what? This interview was done in March, so plans could change, right? Well, thanks to a tip from a YouTube commenter, I was directed to a feature about Soul Calibur 3 from the September 2005 edition of Electronic Gaming Monthly, in which Yatoriyama was straight up asked about whether or not Dante would appear in Soul Calibur 3. The interviewer received a no so forceful that he almost thought that they misheard the question. So I think I can clearly say that this, along with the other evidence, goes to show beyond a reasonable doubt that the myth of Dante's inclusion in Soul Calibur 3 is busted. It kind of blows my mind that this has lasted for so long. This isn't the first time that a rumor began in the back rooms of an internet forum thread, and it probably won't be the last. So why did I even bother making this video? Well, I just wanted to say that you should take these kinds of rumors at face value. Consider the sources, consider the information, and don't be afraid to do a little bit of legwork. I found it surprising that outlets that I respect, like Joystick, Game Informer, and countless forum goers picked up that ball and ran with it. And in the age with more fake leaks and misinformation about games than ever before, a little bit of healthy and reasonable skepticism can go a long, long way. So there you have it. That is another video in the bag. Uh, my name is Stumblebee. Once again, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Twitter, and if you really, really like this video and want to contribute a little more to the pot, you can go ahead and shoot me a couple dollars on Patreon as well. If you have any other myths that you want me to analyze or look up or confirm or disconfirm or bust or what have you, um, let me know in the comments. I would love to continue the fact or fiction series. I love this kind of stuff. Doing research is my jam. So, uh, once again, subscribe to me. You, you do the things that I just told you to do. I'll see you in another month. I'll talk to you soon. I love you guys. Thank you once again for 20,000 subscribers. Or if, if I don't get this video out before, then thank you for getting me close to it at least. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> anyway.